Let's start with metabolism. What is metabolism as I explained to you? Now, the most specifically, we are concerned here with energy metabolism. Now, my question is, how do we extract energy from the food? This is the first question. The second, how do energy comes in food that we extract? And here is a big thing. And you know what is that? All the energy that is there on this planet Earth is derived from sun. So sun is the ultimate source of energy. Sun is the ultimate source of energy. energy. That energy is trapped by the plants. And plant convert that solar energy into the chemical energy in the form of food and then we eat that food or the animals we eat eat that food and extract energy from the food they eat it is, is it clear i hope this should be clear now what is the twisty thing in it no i'm telling you twisty thing that is really very twisty now what is that twisty thing you see that this is the basic reaction and I tell you, I mean, this is not a boring thing. This is a really very interesting thing. Uh, if we don't understand these things, we won't be able to appreciate the biochemistry and the energy metabolism and all those things. So, although these are very basic things we often study in our primary and in our high school and in our college, but uh, understanding all these things at this level are very much important and appreciating the, the impact of these things in the life is really very important to understand. So, photosynthesis. So, this is what? This is carbon dioxide that is present abundantly in the atmosphere. It reacts with water and it traps sunlight in the presence of chlorophyll and it makes C6H12O6, which I deliberately call food. Although it is glucose, but I am deliberately calling it food and we get oxygen and you see that carbon dioxide is present in the highly oxidized form highly oxidized form of carbon is called carbon dioxide it cannot be further oxidized this is the fully oxidized form and then the plants do what by getting this energy this carbon dioxide is reduced to food so, this reduction of carbon dioxide to food actually gives a lot of energy to the food. Okay? So, actually carbon dioxide traps this energy. Now, this, this energy is trapped by the carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is becoming food. Yeah. And water is oxidized to oxygen. So, I write it here. Carbon dioxide is reduced to food and water is oxidized to oxygen. Okay, so now you see that if more is the reduced form of food, more will be energy in it. You see, I um, see C C C lot of C's C's C's, and you have lot of hydrogens, and uh, I mean to say what hydrogens. But you are not finding any oxygen in here, just one terminal oxygen and that I am drawing the structure of fatty acid. So this fatty acid is the highly reduced form of carbon. As it is highly reduced, so it means that it contains maximum energy. Okay, And when we will study for, uh, in the coming weeks, we will see that how it has the maximum energy. I just want to make you sure that if the food is highly reduced, it will produce a lot of energy. If it is less reduced, it will produce less energy. You see that the less reduced form of food is carbohydrate. The highly reduced form of food is lipids. Intermediate form is proteins. So by my convention, which I, I, I explained to you just, that various lipids should liberate a lot of energy upon oxidation. Similarly, carbohydrates should 
release a little amount of energy while the proteins will liberate the intermediate amount of energy. So you clear? Uh, what is the big thing I am telling is I'm just telling that if the food is reduced, I mean it have lot of hydrogen and no oxygen or little oxygen, then it must give lot of energy. And uh, if uh, the food is little re reduced, I mean somewhat reduced, it does contain oxygen as well as uh, uh, other things like nitrogen, sulfur, potassium, magnesium, etc. It should liberate less amount of energy. So is it clear? Now, if I summarize this all, is that the sunlight is responsible for the reduction of carbon dioxide to food. Why am I calling glucose the food? Why? All the food that is there on this planet Earth is produced through photosynthesis. And the first product of photosynthesis is, although triosis, but triosis are ultimately converted into glucose. And you see here, this is this is very much appreciating thing you just see here. Like you see, you are taking carbon dioxide from the environment, water from soil, and minerals from soil. All these things make all food means carb, proteins, I mean to say amino acids, lipids, all lipids, uh, nucleic acids, vitamins. You see, in these things, if you see that, in these things, you find nitrogen, you find sulfur, you find potassium, you find magnesium, all these things are coming from minerals from the soil. While if we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, as in the case of carbohydrates, they come from carbon dioxide and water. Alright? So you understand? So, what is the big thing? What is the big picture? <laughs> the big picture is that whatever the food is produced that we eat, we eat pizzas, shawarmas, biryani, and I think now you are slivating, but don't worry, we eat all those things. A uh, lot of things. All these foods that we eat in all our life are one way or the other are dependent upon the photosynthesis. Is it clear? Now the reverse of the reverse of this thing happens in the animals. Now what is that reverse thing that happens in the animals? You see that? What happens in the animals? In the animals, you have this food. Again I am deliberately using the word food for glucose. You have this food and now you oxidize this food. And when we oxidize food, we get what? We get carbon dioxide and water and ATP and this is the energy okay so we can say that we how do we get energy how do we get energy or you can say extract energy from food by oxidation of food And we can also say this oxidation of fuel. And this is the only way by which uh, uh, most of uh, uh, the society is getting energy. What I mean to say is that a fuel, if it is natural gas, if we burn this natural gas, we get carbon dioxide, water and energy. And this energy helps us in cooking food, in running factories, We have petrol or gasoline. Gasoline burns with oxygen and we get energy. And that energy drives all the vehicles. You see that? The only source. I mean, how do we get energy? 
uh, if it is present in the body, if it is present in the body, we get energy food. Uh, we get energy from the food we eat. But if we want to produce energy from the outside environment, what we do? We burn fuel. We oxidize fuel. Uh, that fuel may be um, just wood. That may be natural gas. That may be gasoline. That may be petrol. That can be diesel. That can be a lot of things. So we burn all those things with oxygen and we get energy. And that energy is used to drive all the functions that we are doing in our daily lives. So, thus I hope you understand. Now, what I explain is that you need air. You need fuel. Air contains oxygen and fuel is burned. And when, when fuel is burned in oxygen, we get energy. And that energy we get in our body is in the form of ATP.